So why don't we start, first of all, we're going to be talking about side chains, sister chains, and I think we'll just do a quick um, round, round the panel, if we could, first, and do an intro. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. My name's Daniel Azor. I'm with uh, EOS Metal, BP. Uh, we currently represent uh, EOS Mainnet, uh, Telos, and Warbly. Today on the panel, I'll be representing Warbly. Yeah, uh, I'm Mao. Um, I'm from EOS Rio. Uh, we have been working on the EOS governance ever since the beginning, very beginning. Uh, so we are the early, like, you know, mainnet BP for uh, Wobbly, as well as, you know, uh, uh, we are trying to create a governance focused, you know, sister chain called the GOC, Governance of Consensus, um, you know, in the very near future. I'm Kedar, I'm with Liberty Block and Everpedia. I guess I'll mostly be representing Everpedia here today. Hello, everyone. I'm Anzor from EOS. We're a sister chain to EOS, and we believe that people are important, and we're going to tell you all about why, why that is important. Hi, everyone. I'm Rob Consor from EOS Detroit, and uh, we are also similar to Metal running on EOS, Warbly, and Telos. Uh, and I'll be representing Telos today. Red Out Kirkpool, EOS Amsterdam. We're only on Mainnet, and this morning we had a basically a kickoff meeting of uh, uh, the Europe chain. Uh, we've been debating it a bit over the last, uh, I think, two months. Uh, we made a conceptual plan, and we decided this morning to continue developing that. All right, great. I think it's it's interesting already just seeing how many different chains and potential concepts we've got there to, to work through and, and think about. And it's an indication, if you like, of the, the promised land of the future. Um, we're talking already about sister chains and holding hands and it's going to be perfect. But actually, the reality before inter-blockchain communication, of course, is that these are rival chains right now. So what do you guys say to that, that right now you're all directly in competition with one another to some degree? Well, that's fascinating considering we're on three, um, uh, <laughs> at least from EOS Metal's perspective. You know, we there's there's some organizations that have rebranded according to what chain they're on. For us, we, we made a conscious decision not to do that as for us, EOS Metal stands for EOS IO, and we're going to support uh, any chains that have an opportunity to propel the community and the technology forward. Um, there's some interesting things being done on Telos that are advancing the technology beyond what Mainnet's doing. Uh, you could say the same thing for uh, Warbly. I should speak about. I'm representing him. Uh, the uh, <laughs> Warbly is representing a, uh, a fintech-focused chain. So there's certain things there that uh, you have to support, like AML uh, or excuse me, ALM and KYC uh, that you can't do on a public Mainnet. Um, so there's anything that's focused on uh, fintech or financial sector, uh, you need those things in order to attract big enterprise business. So in the case of Warbly, certainly, uh, there's a symbiotic relationship with EOS. Uh, there's even been some uh, rumor and speculation about uh, dApps that Block One themselves are working on that could potentially launch on uh, Warbly, as an example, because they would require KYC. So even Block One, I would look to them in the future to put their work towards the chain that makes the most sense. And really, these chains are not about competition as much as they are about expanding resources, bringing more use cases, and in my opinion, optimizing for a specific industry or utility that expands the overall uh, community. Yeah, good answer. And I think, you know, uh, before, uh, if mainnet is doing well, you know, there is no competition at all. And all of us combined, you know, no matter how many chains combined, uh, less than 5% of the worth of the mainnet. Uh, however, uh, if, uh, if there are something, you know, uh, complementary, the sister chains or whatever you call it, forking chains, can do better than main chain, there will be competition. For example, uh, I'm foreseeing the uh, abolish of the inflation or majority part of inflation uh, or abolish the WPS, you know, worker proposal fund, um, which sta is stated in the uh, EOS white paper um, very soon, soon enough, like, you know, in next three months, six months at most. So, you know, the uh, our GOC chain uh, will try to, 
you know, focus on the governance as well as work proposal fund. Uh, any uh, sister chains, including you know, EOS mainnet, if they need money, you know, to develop, we will we will accept the proposal as well. So it's a complementary, you know, relationship. Uh, if there is nothing to compete, um, so yeah, so wobbly, you know, uh, we are on the on the uh, BP side as well. Um, so uh, it's not the AML KYC side, you know, competing uh, with the mainnet like what just explained. Uh, the mainnet can do the ID system. Actually, Dan and I remember, you know, uh, have been thinking about ID system for quite some time, especially for the universal basic income. Uh, without an ID system, you cannot do that. So or the universal basic resource system. Um, so the main focus is still like, you know, um, uh, just like the question asked by acknowledging, you know, um, uh, company uh, in last panel, um, what's the focus? Like, you know, if mainnet has no one to focus on the financial, you know, applications, Wobbly is focusing on that, that's complementary. So, uh, there is very, very long way to go uh, to that point uh, where sister chains are competing against each other. And that time will be uh, the inter-blockchain communication, you know, start to exist. So at that time, you know, it's still like, you know, even how to cut competition will still become the complementary to the whole EOS ecosystem. That's what we think. Yeah, what do you think, Kira? Sisters or, you know, fighting sisters? Uh, we're going to be a straight up side chain. So the trading is yeah. going to occur on the main net. Uh, the token balances will be on the main net. Uh, we're just going to set up a separate side chain uh, that's going to handle knowledge based dApps, things like that. Um, so all of our transactions work on the side chain. The idea being that we can create accounts easier. Um, so we can create free accounts. Uh, RAM is one thing where you can just. You can take that number. The reason the RAM market went so high, I think, was because somebody just did the math wrong on the formula. Um, you could just take a 0.1 and stick it right in front of the formula, and that would drop the RAM price by a tenth. I don't think it's market discovery that's keeping the price that high. I think it's just the numbers are skewed. Um, so there's things like that we can make changes. Um, yeah. So we're gonna run our. We're gonna move into a side chain probably like next month or the month after, two months later. So I don't think it's as far away as people are saying it's going to be, um, and I think when it happens, it's going to be, it's going to be competitive-ish. I don't think it's going to be quite as uncompetitive as we think it'll be initially, um, because you're going to have to pick a specific chain for your DAP. Um, I'd like it to also be like friendship wins, and we're all friends and holding hands. <laughs> but still, actually, uh, I think that. What's happening here is a fine example of decentralization in, uh, I don't like that word, but anyway, I don't want to think about anything else, but decentralized effort to adopt the technology that's, that's powering all of these chains, because the code here is common, well, at least for now. And uh, we've found some, some good things with this code and we, 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 we would like to spread it as much as possible. And to do that, we need to, uh, to allocate resources, and I mean developers and money and teams and uh, management uh, well leadership to, uh, to move it in different directions at the same time and to cover the most ground possible so that uh, there is like chains for everyone to, to accommodate every need possible. And uh, while there might be competition for well, maybe BPs, but uh, as you've seen, some of the BPs are already running all the chains, and maybe the US as well soon, maybe. So um, yeah, I think it's uh, actually a very good thing to what's, what's happening in here. And uh, this is why uh, I remember that it's written EOS IO open source software everywhere in EOS white paper. It's, it's never written like EOS mainnet or something like that. I, I, the, the most common thing that you can see there is EOS IO open source code or open source, source software because that's the essence of it. It was meant to be forked many times over. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, 
I think that competition's inevitable, but it's good. There's nothing wrong with a little sibling rivalry. Af you know, siblings make up and they're still friends and love each other. So uh, <clears throat> I think that competition's good because it will push uh, innovation across the chains that are competing. Uh, so, you know, Telos and EOS are competing to have products deployed in their RAM pools. Like, that's just inevitable. Uh, we can try to dress it up, but they are. <laughs> Uh, so, um, th but it's okay because uh, Telos creates this whole other RAM pool. So now, if the RAM pool on EOS is too expensive, you can deploy on Telos. If the if the price of the Telos RAM pool increases, you can go back to EOS. So it gives more choices to the developers where they want to deploy. And uh, on top of that, uh, the airdrop theory kind of aligns us all, anyways. As long as you were in the right snapshot, you're good. Some people won't be in the sna both snapshots, and they might have a vested interest in one chain succeeding over the other. But um, you know, there's a reason, like you said, Daniel, we're EOS IO Detroit because we are uh, EOS IO maximalists. We think all these chains can serve a different purpose, test different market conditions. So I like to think of EOS as the control group, and it's got really high stakes. You know, that four billion dollar market cap. Uh, so when we want to go experiment, we need to make some experiment chains, and Telos to me is a great experiment. Uh, they're changing, they've evolved the governance a lot, they have, uh, you know, there's net new features that can be forked back upstream into EOS. Uh, there's a, a number of those, so they have a uh, global namespace for tokens, so there can only be one of each type of token across all the contracts, which is something we've seen uh, on EOS where like some other account can deploy an EOS contract and that can get confusing for users. So uh, they have a decentralized uh, DNS service, they have IPFS integrated, fully formed uh, ratify amend so they we can do referendum out of the gate when Telos launches. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on there and a lot of that stuff can be cherry picked back into the uh, EOS network. Uh, as an aside, I'd like to talk about the nomenclature around mainnet. So we started using mainnet because we were afraid there were going to be multiple chains competing to be the EOS network. Now we have the EOS network, and I propose that mainnet's going to be confusing because all of these different networks have a mainnet. Telos has a mainnet, or will. Warbly has a mainnet. It also has a testnet. EOS has, what, five testnets? So <coughs> in my opinion, I just, I've started to call EOS the EOS network. There's only one EOS network. There's an one EOS mainnet, but the mainnet, I think, is a little confusing. So I'd like to talk about, you know, perhaps evolving our nomenclature as this whole side chain, sister chain thing unfurls. So, But, but could it also be that that's because it's the, the, the biggest by market cap and it would be a kind of flippening scenario whereby another sister chain ends up becoming the new mainnet if it overtakes? Maybe, but I personally think that there's going to be many chains regardless. I don't really think there's just going to be one chain to rule them all in EOSIO uh, because they are optimizing for different market verticals. And so, like, you know, I think in the future there will be products that perhaps we want to use that are on a network that's not EOS. Uh, but there's going to be a ton on EOS, and so uh, if we keep saying the mainnet, it gets confusing, I think. Um, but that's just my opinion. So we're going to have a referendum on it, yeah? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the last one in line. I think I agree 100% with everything I, everybody else said. No, I think it's about markets. Um, I, had a, I still have a, a cybersecurity outsourcing company. 600 clients, um, and if I look at my customer base, they will not buy EOS tokens and stake and delegate, it's too complicated. They just want uh, somebody to take care of them. They want a partner that helps them run their apps on chain. And the Europe chain also wants to facilitate the GDPR laws. There's some funny stuff in there, right to be forgotten. How do we implement that on a on a blockchain? That's a tough question. If you read all the white papers that were written by academics on it, then they simply say it cannot be done. And then I start to get interested. I'm an entrepreneur. If it's not can be if it cannot be done, then 
to try to find a solution that is workable. Uh, the GDPR is a balanced law, so you always have to balance the rights of the individual and the rights of the, the app. And uh, I think there's ways to do th uh, stuff on-chain and, and stuff off-chain. And there's, there's a lot of companies that want apps on, on I mean, I, I know companies that did POCs on, uh, on Ethereum and they stopped. The, the fees were too high. Uh, they couldn't uh, program error-free. I mean, the error-free program is, all is, is tough. So uh, I think there's room for, for uh, many chains. That's why we call it Europe Chains, plural. Because I think we will have customers that say, "Yeah, I'm going to give you fifty thousand euros, a hundred thousand euros a month. I run a, run my chain for me. I'm Philips, I'm ING Bank, I'm whatever, and uh, I have some special use cases that need specific things. Um, can you run that for me? For me and my ecosystem. Um, of course, they can set up a portal." and and get everybody to that portal and, and of course that's a lot quicker but if you really want to utilize the the, the strength of a blockchain then um, a side chain is not a bad option and um, we we have many companies already approaching us saying that we want that invoice me in fiat and just provide me with the service uh, i think that's really good to get some Oh, it's it's as near as I've ever seen to consensus across a, a, a fairly wide group here about the the view of the role of of sister chains in terms of where we think it's going to actually potentially benefit the ecosystem. I I wanted to just touch on what Rob said because I think he get started to actually take it to another level, which was re with regards to really what role do they play in the ecosystem in terms of its long-term evolution. So if you look at some of the, I, I, I don't want to call them legacy blockchains, but I'm going to anyway, Grand some of the machines. older blockchains, shall we say. And what, what we've seen over time is a certain degree of complacency that's arguably built up in the communities and maybe some arrogance and, and so on with regards to um, a resistance to change and so on and so forth. Do, do we think therefore that the concept of uh, competing chains is therefore a healthy thing to actually continue to ensure that we, we don't see that on any one particular chain because it constantly has that level of competition? So for my part, I, I would hope for that. I don't know if that's realistic universally. Um, we've already seen some members of the community that look at uh, the EOS network uh, as the one and true EOS and anything else is, is just not. Uh, the problem with that is you can't achieve the infinite scalability of EOS without these various chains. And the term sister chain or side chain, resource chain, hard fork, soft fork, I, I think as an EOS community we really have to try to nail down these terms to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. Well, do you want to give a definition for, the, for everyone of side chain versus sister chain? I'll be honest, I myself have differing opinions on which one is correct for the given circumstance. I would consider, by my own personal definition, Warbly a sister chain. Uh, Telos, I'm on the fence of whether that would fall under the category of side chain and sister chain. It really depends about your personal context of what those meanings are. And I think as a community, we have to define that. Yeah, actually, um, I think you gave a definition to me earlier of this, which I thought was quite neat. Do you yeah, it, it's actually, I think it's pretty simple. Um, it's, um, well, it depends on whether the chain is using its own token for resource allocation for block uh, producer simulation uh, or is it using the uh, the not the mainnet but the eos chains uh, token <laughs> so if it's using the eos chains token it's a side chain and it's uh, it's mainly for the scalability of some of the features that would otherwise be deployed to the eos chain and if it's using its own uh, token like Warbly or like Telos or like EOS uh, and it may change some of the rules uh, but it's well inheriting at least some part of the code of the initial EOS IO open source code then it it's a sister chain so Okay. That, that, sorry I, I was gonna say in terms of if you look at that therefore this whole concept of sister 
and and sidechain. And if we then look at the the I'm going to call it the main net. I know. Yeah. If you look at the main net and its current ongoing debates relating to the the idea of a constitution and where the likes of arbitration currently sits with, with and if you actually then look at Dan Larimer's potential vision for that moving up to the app layer, is there a potential there for, for example, for you if in that scenario, for the main net to be able to handle all of this different variety of, of configurations, some of which we're, we're seeing in, in individual chains, sister chains, to get around these problems, whereby you could have that. So you could have a fully European configured application on the main net that was compl fully compliant and use side chains for further scaling. Do you think that's a possibility? Uh, it <coughs> for me, it depends how much the protocol diverges. So that the base protocol um, can diverge and has diverged in Telos. So Telos has different BP pay structure. It rotates in standby BPs. Uh, there's a bunch of divergent features that I don't think you could necessarily accommodate. Um, <coughs> however, the variety in governance structures, I think, could be accommodated uh, by scaling the EOS network through side chains that use the same token. Uh, so, you know, there's just so many different ways that we can uh, structure these things. And I think it is good to have a pile on effect. There, you know, network effects are powerful. Um, however, uh, there are certain experiments I don't think we could necessarily play out uh, on the same uh, protocol. Yeah, I mean EOSIO is the, the 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 core, but you know they're diverging now. We're seeing like Warbly made the uh, RAM proportional to stake, so there is no RAM market in Bancor algorithm. It's just as m your Warbly tokens represent how much stake you have, and that's something we couldn't necessarily do uh, in the same EOS network. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree with that. And actually, UOS is is that the right way to pronounce it? UOS, UOS. Yeah, but but this w if you um, maybe just give the audience a, a very brief one because you're utilizing e EOS itself, but you've got a different underlying protocol at the base of it. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're utilizing EOS code, uh, and for now we're not even changing it because there's uh, well certain time needs to pass before we can uh, diverge from it completely and uh, go our own path. But uh, the main difference is the consensus algorithm and the emission algorithm. Uh, whereas in, uh, in uh, EOS, it's DPOS, uh, delegated proof of stake. In our chain, is, um, it's DPOI, which stands for delegated proof of importance. So uh, yeah, importance, in short, it's um, a metric that we, we thought of uh, that would be better suited for um, a chain in which participants, active participants are rewarded instead of just people who have a high stake are rewarded. So uh, importance consists of stake, transactional activity, which represents actual economic activity, like uh, you're, you're selling something, you, you receive tokens for that, it means you're important. And then there's social activity, which is a subjective part of it. We inherited that from Steam because we, we like Steam philosophy very much, but we, we think that their ideas can be approved upon uh, in the implementation part. So, um, yeah, and we're all for um, uh, a thin distribution along the maximum amount of participants so that there's um, as, la well, as little, uh, as few as possible whales uh, to. Um, to manipulate uh, anything in, inside the system. So uh, yeah, that's that's what we do. Okay, actually. no, that's good. All right, we're going to do a quick fire round now. So uh, you're not allowed to actually say your own chain that you're representing, but wh what do you think uh, would be the killer app y in your view on t to be on a on a sister chain you know, for EOS and why? Yeah. Yeah, you, if, if you don't know, then fine. Um, I'm trying to think. A killer app for any chain. Yeah, but, uh, but particularly why it would be on a, on a sister chain. So. Well, I it's not necessarily specifically a DAP. I, I suppose that it is in a way. But what I'm most excited for and what I think <laughs> is going to really drive blockchain as a whole forward is IBC. That's what I'm really excited to see. Someone come together and discover, or I shouldn't say discover, but create a way 
for that to work seamlessly across not just USIO, but potentially uh, other unrelated chains. Um, uh, I've spoken to quite a few individuals in the space that are watching it, and I think as a community, regardless of the chain we're on, there's an opportunity for us to potentially define a protocol because with EOSIO, we have an opportunity where the chains are similar enough that we can practice and, and try out some things that might not work if you were uh, trying to like link Ethereum and Bitcoin as an example with an atomic swap. So we can, I think as a community, establish a protocol that could be the basis for IBC in the future. And that's what excites me. Um. I think the uh, different chains got different, you know, applications or the killing applications, and in the long run, um, every chain is competing, you know, for the for the users or for the community members, and uh, it's not a problem for short term, uh, because for as for the whole EOS, you know, community, it represents like less than five percent of the crypto world, and uh, the whole crypto world represents probably less than one percent of the real world like 6 billion people uh, among 6 billion people the newest like you know number from coinbase is like 6 million uh, registered users or the one who has you know been purchasing uh, cryptocurrency with coinbase so so it's nothing so so each of the the, the largest legacy problem you know um, david just just asked about is um, how we can get more users from both the real world as well as you know um, the true like you know uh, users you know uh, create those apps. So today's uh, most active you know dApps uh, would most likely uh, or I'm like ninety nine percent certain it will not be the killing app in the future. So each chain at the beginning like you know uh, what Wobbly is solving uh, the RAM problem. You don't need to, you know, um, buy or be educated for hours of how you plan your own resource, um, like, uh, you know, uh, IT manager. It's it's very so. So you're almost saying that it's down to the individual configuration exactly, of each exactly. chain as so to what's going to be the killer app on it. Or so could be. wobbly, like, you know, at the beginning, um, to my understanding, uh, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. So it's the it's you don't it's easy to implement the RAM solution or the resource solution. Uh, for GOC, you know, uh, the chain, you know, um, which is a great hit in China uh, and is soon open to globe, um, the killing app is the uh, governance node. So uh, we got a truly decentralized on-chain dispute resolution, you know, system uh, on-chain. So basically uh, we don't have uh, ECAF role but we have a moderator role to walk all the governance nodes through the case. And the case, yes or no, uh, will be approved by the majority votes uh, of the governance node, which can be you know, thousands of you know, eventually, or at least you know, hundreds of them uh, at the beginning. So that can be an interesting app. Um, and for um, TLOS, you know, uh, if I understand right, the main killing app is, you know, the 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 cheaper of RAM, you know. So yeah, that's almost a, uh, an advantageous feature, isn't it, rather than necessarily a, an app itself. But I understand. Yeah. You. So uh, talking talking about more DAP, like what I said, you know, it's still depending on uh, the value of users, and you know how many users you got, like yeah. on the EOS. Uh, how do you use the word now? It's if it's not mainnet, <laughs> like on the EOS, you know, net. EOS mainnet. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, uh, it's more like you know, it's more on the traditional like or the current crypto user end, um, which is mostly like gaming inherited from the uh, Ethereum world. Yeah. So so it's more about users and uh, the value of user you know uh, can generate from. So uh, on the EOS mainnet, it is like that right now. So on different chains, you know, um, or, or the users of different chains, there will be certain or specific uh, value of users uh, that can, you know, uh, proceed, you know, down to the road. Yeah. So, I mean, Kedar, for example, actually, Everpedia in some ways represents 
one of the the early killer apps that we have by way of mass adoption. So ha how how have you found the whole um, journey of actually going to the route you've taken with then a sidechain like this as well? I mean, has it technically been a challenge for you to actually develop this out? Uh, actually, developing the sidechain hasn't been hard because we're going with a trusted sidechain. The hard part is the IBC, yep. um, which we can implement later. Um, the heart, the reason we moved to a sidechain, the journey's kind of been, initially it was easy to use the main net, people were able to run transactions, no problem. Now CPU is really expensive, the gambling dApps have taken over the main net, so it's basically a casino, the main net, it's not really meant for, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's like. Yeah, that's a good name, Yo's Casino Main Net. <laughs> yeah, the Casino Main Net, yeah. Um, so we can't really run our transactions, our users can't run their transactions on the network anymore, so we have to go off into a sidechain in order to make it work. Uh, we also were the largest of any DAP on the network. I think we're probably going to end up being the largest RAM consumer if we stay on the main net. Um, we had a gigabyte allocated earlier. We're, we're at like 40 right now. We could easily, we have three gigabytes worth of data we're trying to put on the chain. It's just way too expensive to put on there. Right. So I think the killer DAP on any, on any side chain, the killer DAP is going to be a DAP that uses lots of data. So the, the internet is based on sharing data. Um, we can't have DAPs using each other very usefully until we can have large amounts of data on chain and do some sort of analysis based on that. So I think the point of these side chains is going to be to pull gigabytes and terabytes of data onto sister and side chains kind of things. And then you'll be able to, using IBC, hopefully, it doesn't look, it's going to be really expensive, but maybe there'll be a better method that comes out soon. Yeah, wh what's interesting about the, the, you're talking about the de decision methodology you've applied there is that effectively the economics of the, the, the casino mainnet has ultimately dictated your, your decision-making choices there in terms of the design. And yeah, we didn't want to go to a side chain until three or four months from now, but it's been forced, you know, our hands kind of been forced and we're going to go to it next month at this point. So uh, I th This is all the plan. I mean, every look at what Block One did. Everything is executed perfectly. The ICO was executed perfectly. They transferred everything to fiat perfectly. They structured the the, f the 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 venture capital firms perfectly the hackathon organized perfectly the only thing that was a big mess is mainnet and 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 some other things that we consider is no that's intent it's really intent how do you get so much entrepreneur so much brain in the in the room active on this embracing it looking at opportunities there's a lot of an intelligent smart Business here. So, so you're saying that Dan Larimer created Block Twitter just to stress test the network? For yeah, example. yeah, it yeah. could be, could be. I, l I love myself, right? And, yeah, and just keep posting. Could, it. could <laughs> be, could be. There's, there's a lot of things that if you look, I, th I think if I, over five years we look back, then everything falls into place. Because your question was, is there a, a launching dab? No, it will be a long tail. Will be a couple of big big applications and a very long tail of thousands and thousands of apps and there's a lot of things that need a signature come on we're a signature engine so everything in the world where you like plays a signature for every that everything will be an app yeah we're going from an internet of information to an internet of value and to create value you need signatures yeah that's the only way to do that transaction so that, and there will be thousands of, of, of side chains, I think. Yeah, and actually the, the most exciting thing, if you look at that idea of an ecosystem of, of multiple chains like this, is it is actually incredibly decentralizing. I, the, the more that get added fundamentally anyway, you know, we, we sit there getting very, very worried about ownership within a specific chain, but the, when you start to diversify out just, just at this number now, it's, it's already having a huge diversification effect, which I think is really yeah, exciting to see. I think this was the plan. How do you make it so messy that other people th start to think of solutions? <laughs> yeah, because if it was you're a not going to help the token ride, price with with this assessment. Uh, no, but the, the, to <laughs> at the token price, if as long as we got proof that this protocol works, yeah, EOS will go up. Whether we have sister chains uh, with with their own token doesn't really matter. Uh, the the main it will be a star topology. Yeah, mainnet will be in the heart. All the side chains will be on that, and the people that really uh, need to be in the heart will be in the heart. Bancor will really be in the heart of the, the ecosystem, and some other dApps that re and the casino network will be a separate side chain of that. 
So I think there's a business. Some entrepreneur wants to start a casino network. I see some nuts here. So let's do a different room and talk about casino net. Why do you, why do you think that hasn't started? <laughs> and to, um, I hope someone's doing it. So we can get them all off the mainnet and we can start using it again. <laughs> Yeah, there is an urgency here. I, th I think somebody is now don't claiming the domain name and. Yeah, yeah. So um, especially for next year, we are going to get a lot of a lot of like high performance blockchain, you know, launching, uh, other than yours. So so everyone here probably got you know, mm, you know, at most like twelve months time, um, at least three months time, to you know, uh, figure things out, make things, you know, correct, uh, um, to make sure, you know, yours is much toward the, the, the right direction. So that's also, you know, the timing for most of the sister chains as well, uh, because we are not fighting against each other, at least for now, or for a very, you know, short period of time. Um, in the long run, like what I mentioned, you know, um, if you look at the whole world or even the crypto world, you know, as a whole, um, we are grabbing, we are trying to grab, you know, uh, the market share from some, somebody else. And that's, you know, um, that's a great opportunity to be here um, talking about this. Um, and, you know, we can unite together and try to figure out a way, you know, to to, to stand, you know, uh, till still at the first place, you know, next year we are here. Um, so that's something, you know, um, um, urgent uh, to bring, you know, upon, you know, uh, in this conference, I think. Yeah, I, I think the, the takeaway often when, when I start to look at this bigger picture stuff like this is it's actually quite an inspiring one because we get so focused on the minutiae of, of configuration and governance related issues and all sorts of things on the on the casino net, we'll call it now, shall we, the new name for it. But, but if you actually look at that, the, it, it's very easy to get bogged down in that minutiae, but when you actually start to look out at this, this bigger, wider ecosystem that's starting to even now bud and, and grow out it's it's quite quite inspiring potentially but where do you as a as a closing note we've got five minutes left to uh where, where do each of you see eos and particularly in the context of, of side and sister chains being in say <coughs> two years time which is a long time in crypto but where where do you do think it's going to be do you mind if i quickly answer the previous question yeah okay so <coughs> i think the killer app is to fix existing governance in the world um it's broken, it sucks, it doesn't work for most people, and uh, you know, there's a lot of perversion, there's a lot of suffering. And so one of the thought experience, experiments I like to perform is, I don't know who's familiar with sociocracy in here, but it's like scaling up representation. Yeah, Brandon and I talk about it sometimes. Um, and so you know, the US government, uh, for instance, that's where we're from, um, there's this real problem with representation nowadays, and it's not really working the way it was designed to. The states have kind of lost control. The federal government has most of the control. It's top heavy. It's not what we wanted or what was intended. Uh, and so I see like this, you know, there's this fractal nature we're noticing where these chains, there's going to be chains of chains of chains of chains of chains of chains. Of chains. And, uh, you know, that maps pretty nicely into like federal, local, and state government. So what if we represented all the states as a chain and all the local municipalities in a state as their own chain? And we, we took the sociocracy approach where each of those groups sent a representation or representative up to the higher level and kind of had more of a peer representation in our governance. Um, I, I think that governance is what needs to be fixed. I mean, Daniel's talked about this too. He's like, we can completely get rid of taxes all we have to do is print the federal budget or the, the state budget uh, with token inflation. And all of a sudden, no more taxes, the government's funded, and it's all accountable and transparent so everyone can see where the money flows. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to actually disrupt real government <laughs> with, uh, with ESIO. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, so to, to your previous question, uh, I agree. Two years is a long time in blockchain. I think uh, EOS IO is going to be extremely strong. Uh, I, 
I can't even imagine what it's going to look like. What I do believe, though, is that EOS network is not going to go anywhere. The EOS token is still going to be uh, the godfather, if you would, of all these different opportunities and, and, and various chains. And, and I think that's an important thing that we have to highlight is that each of these chains represents an opportunity, whether that's in the form of tokens, whether that's in the form of resources for a specific DAP that's very uh, resource intensive. Um, it's all new opportunity, and this all builds upon each other. So uh, I really have an optimistic view of it. Um, even though there are going to be some competitive points, as uh, the panels pointed out, in terms of, oh, which chain is better for a particular DAP. But the fact that the DAP even has that option is the point. And that's the benefit of having these various side chains focused on different uh, industries, utilities. Um, so the infinite scalability of EOS is achieved through those chains. So, uh, and, and one thing that I haven't seen uh, talked about yet is just where the BP's role is in that. You know, it, I think there's an advantage as a BP, and it's why we've done it as a strategic decision, to represent multiple chains, because that allows us to become experts in the field. We've now launched three different chains, or soon to be three chains, and I think there's going to be opportunity for more. And it's important for BPs to perform uh, a professional infrastructure operation where you have representation for each of those chains, you're careful about cross-pollination, but what you end up with is a BP that's very experienced, they've gone through various launches, they've had to work technical issues on different chains. So even from an infrastructure perspective, I see the support of these multiple chains as a benefit to everything. We've seen it, we've worked it, that can help us on whatever chain runs into whatever issue at whatever time, if that makes sense. Um, uh, I didn't say, you know, about the uh, new form of, of community or governance thing, you know, because I realized that uh, Norway is a socialist country uh, at the beginning. But anyway, so I believe in two years' time, um, we we'll just mentioned, you know, about a new um, social community organized, you know, on chain, on blockchain, uh, which such blockchain should be based on YOSIL, um, most likely, in my view, uh, will be, you know, we, we will see such, you know, community uh, truly, you know, start to exist. Um, that's kind of, you know, the best of killing app, um, uh, in my view. Uh, if you look at an uh, easier way, um, uh, it could be just like, you know, an uh, internet game. A game, you know, uh, like which can be just filmed like the player one, uh, which probably is the hittest, you know, movie uh, this year. So um, that's, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I don't mind whether it's the casino net, you know, uh, evolve into that one. Uh, because Daniel actually, you know, uh, thought or is thinking about, you know, the whole plan, how to launch this community stuff. Um, of course, you know, it's getting harder and harder to be launched at the mainnet. Um, uh, so there's, there could be different kind of uh, side chain back to the topic. Um, finally, one of them. Or we'll realize what you know, um, Dan Larimer's original design about the community based on Yosil. I think we'll have hundreds of chains using five or six different protocols, and they'll all be semi siloed because IBC won't be totally figured out yet. Um, but there'll be you know, some sort of vague communication between the nets, um, and that we'll be slowly building towards a new form of the internet, but not quite there yet. Um, what I think is uh in two years time because we have this what what we have right here like we have this community of like-minded people that have different approaches to solving different problems and they even care about different problems that's why they, they created different side chains but uh, uh anyway this helps us to bring it to the more general public because we're uh, we're working towards making it more simple more usable for people that are not used to to running smart contracts that are not used to delegating or like buying ram or something and the fact that we're all working in different directions like i said before uh, is going to allow us to cover more ground 
and to bring more people that are not yet familiar with what what EOS was like when it was launching, when it was like uh, well very complicated and it's getting more and more simpler for people. <coughs> and I believe that um, the, the the simple solutions for uh, for uh, common people that want to just do some something uh, on a decentralized system just because it's more um, more economically viable for them not because it's just decentralized and geeky stuff is the way that uh, EOS is gonna end up in two two or three years with all the side chains with all the hundreds of side chains maybe with IBC as well well maybe maybe it will be okay by then let's hope <laughs> let's do it let's not hope let's do it in fact well said let's do it um, <coughs> so in two years time that mm. was the question yep um, I think we'll We'll be well on our way to mainstream adoption. We'll have <coughs> at least one DAP that has over a million users, if not many, and perhaps even 10 million. Um, <coughs> this stuff's going to grow like wildfire ex exponentially. It will be validated by then. Uh, we'll see real value and impact uh, as people that are struggling and maybe disenfranchised are being kind of shown this new opportunity taking in part of it, earning value back, improving their lives. There's going to be a very po awesome positive feedback loop of just sustainable abundance and prosperity. Uh, and, you know, that's what we're driving for. And that's the narrative that we believe uh, we should all be working on. <laughs> Getting rich is a side product of building real value. Yeah, let's do it. Now, in two years' time, I'm in the, I think there will a lot of changes, um, especially because enterprises are also getting on this chain. They they have apps, they have ideas, they see the decentralized disruption coming towards them and they need to adapt to that. Um, there will be a lot of people talking about blockchain. There's a lot of IT companies, Akamai, VMware, all of them are, are, are coming with uh, blockchain as a service models, I think. EOS is, is a blockchain as a service model and all those ecosystems that we're talking about, whether it's different RAM pricing or different KYC or d tailored at European enterprises, it's all the same trying to dominate the world with, uh, with a certain technology. There's one th additional thing I want to say is that the most difficult of this is sales. I mean, if I look at I, I did a cybersecurity company. I started a cybersecurity company 20 years ago. We didn't have a word for it yet. Cyber, that w what was that? Um, and my difficult, most difficult experience was selling stuff. Uh, sales, I have 40% of my, my company is sales, and they do a lousy job. Uh, I do 50% of, of the sales. They do the other part. Uh, why? Because they are not passionate. They don't know, this is passion. Everybody here is passionate. Many of the people here did are volunteers. You can't beat a volunteer to a professional sales guy. If you combine the two, a little bit of sales skills, a little bit of volunteerism, then we can dominate this. This I'm pretty sure in two years time, with this group of people, imagine. Yeah, I, I think that's a great sentiment to end it on. And, and actually, if we look at all these side chains and, and the expansion of this out, you look at the size of this room right now, it, it could be a, a massive, massive group of people with that kind of passion as well. And, and I think you know, the, the best part about it is you talk to everybody across all these different projects and we're all actually trying to, trying to actually achieve the same thing with the same goals, which is to try and change the world for the better. And I think that's a great sentiment to end it on, so thank you. <laughs>